hit the roll button. Rolling. All right, ready? Yeah. One bourbon, one scotch, one rye. Apologies no. to no. George Thoroughgood. Hey y'all, it's Chris Liber. Today, this video is on three lesser known whiskey cocktails that really everyone should know, but we're kind of going after you whiskey connoisseurs. We want to expand your palate, talk about how you can incorporate some cocktails into your evening drinking. They do call for some modifiers, some different bottles, but these are not the modifiers you're gonna like buy, use once, and then it's just gonna collect dust. Let's get started. These drinks are great. You're gonna love them. The first cocktail today is a New Orleans classic. It's the View Carré. We love this drink because it's brown, bitter, and stirred, but has a lot more going on than just the classic old fashioned. So the first ingredient in the View Carré is three quarter ounce of a good quality rye, Today we pulled no punches. We went with Whistle Pig's Old World Cask Finish 12 Year Rye. You may think that's a bold choice for a cocktail, but we love it here because this is aged in three different types of wine cask. We have Port, Madeira, and so turns. So that wine character from the barrel is gonna really complement the next ingredients in this cocktail. Next up in equal measures is a good quality cognac. Today we selected Lestal's Brandy de Jerez. We'll add that into the mixing tin. The reason we went with a good quality cognac today is because third ingredient, sweet vermouth, also in three quarter ounce measure, is gonna complement some of the wine and grape notes that we found in the cognac. Next up is the ingredient we think really makes this Yucare cocktail. That's Benedictine. Benedictine is a French liqueur. It's herbal, spice, full of honey and saffron. A half ounce measure goes into the mixing glass. The finishing ingredients in the Yucare are two dashes each of aromatic bitters, and Peychaud's bitters. Today, we're actually gonna substitute for Bitter Truth's Creole bitters. Basically, what you're looking for here is a strong licorice and anise note. Really makes the aromatics of this cocktail pop. So with all the ingredients in a mixing glass, we'll stir this Yucare up for 20 or 30 seconds, strain it out in a rocks glass over a large format ice cube. For garnish, we'll go with a lemon twist and a brandied cherry. Put that on there, slow motion, make it drip, okay? So the second cocktail is gonna switch gears. Where we just did stirred, bitter, nice and uh, rich. The Cameron's Kick is a shaken, little sour. It's punchy, but it also features a split base. First up, an ounce of blended scotch. We selected Monkey Shoulder. You want something pretty mellow, but also malty, but nothing too powerful. So the second spirit in the Cameron's Kick is Irish whiskey. We went with Silky Irish Whiskey today. Tins a little more mellow, uh, does have some like wood character, some grassy notes. We selected it so that it can kind of mellow out and soften the harder hitting malt and peat that we're enjoying in the scotch. We'll add one ounce to the cocktail shaker. Next up is our almond orgeat syrup. We love how the toasted nut marzipan flavor of the orgeat pair with the whiskey duo. We'll add three quarters of an ounce of orgeat to the shaker tin. To round out this sour, we need three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. We'll shake this up for about 15 seconds with ice, strain it out into a coupe, and garnish with a lemon twist. The third cocktail today is a highball, lengthened with club soda, the backsliding Presbyterian. This wonderfully named cocktail is from Evan Buholtz from Bricks and Rye in Greenport, New York. The only spirit in this cocktail is bourbon. We're gonna go with two ounces of a fistful of bourbon. The first modifier we need for the backsliding Presbyterian is Campari, the infamous Italian bitter. We'll add half an ounce to the cocktail tin. The second modifier is our very own fiery ginger syrup. This is a great complement to whiskey in a lot of drinks, but here it's gonna add some spice and the right amount of sweetness to round out this highball. We'll add three quarters of an ounce. To cut the sugar from the Campari and the syrup, we'll go with a full one ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. We'll shake those first four ingredients about five seconds just to incorporate everything. Strain it out in a highball glass filled with ice and top with a couple of ounces of club soda. For garnish, we really love two hearty orange slices. Looks great and you can take a bite out of them when you're done. These are meant to be whiskey centric cocktails for whiskey lovers. In that vein, I wanna introduce y'all to my good friend, Josh Gall, a whiskey nerd and a cocktail fan. Hey Josh. Welcome to the set. Thanks man. I've seen this dude's home bar, it's extensive. He probably has, what do you have, like 50 bottles of whiskey? My, my wife would approve of that, yeah. Okay, we'll see. He only has 50 yeah. bottles, actually in case you're listening. So the first up, this is a Vucare 
give it a shot. I'll tell you what's in it. So split base cocktail, we have rye, cognac, sweet vermouth, a little bit of Benedictine. I know you're an old fashioned guy. What are you, what are you thinking about this Ucare? I think it's good. I, th I think the, the Benedictine is nice. You know, it's something that you might sort of taste from like a, you know, a gin based drink, you know, just with a little bit more of the botanical, but it does play off of the whiskey. It's, and this is what the rye whiskey, this is what the whistle pig, right? You whiskey nerds, you're a little precious about your whiskey sometimes. We, we kind of pulled out a big wig here. This is 12 year old cask finished rye aged in a bunch of wine casks. So this is a hundred to $200 bottle of, of rye. There's kind of a taboo there, right? Like in the whiskey circles, like you're not maybe supposed to mix this all the time, or at least you should at least try it neat to get a sense for it. But what do you think about using such a high proof, uh, high dollar rye in this drink? Does it work? I think, I think that the proof Waste? Is, I think the proof is important on okay. this, you know, um, regardless of sort of the bottle. Now, okay. also, if you can afford to mix with that, I mean, why not? But I, I do think that the rye is necessary and the higher proof in this, just because everything else does have some sweetness, some yeah. added sweetness to it. So you need something to sort of cut, cut through that and play against it. I know you're a wine guy too. Can you are you picking up a lot of wine notes here? It's hard to say if it's if I'm getting it from that or from the finish on the rye. And we also uh, have the vermouth, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of grape happening here. Um, but it, it does all work well together though. For the old fashioned drinkers out there, if we made this drink for them, they stood us at home. Do you feel like this is a whiskey forward cocktail? Would you describe it that way? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, especially for people who are whiskey um, and bourbon and rye drinkers, you know, you can get a, a very basic you know, and simple modifier like this that can do a lot with mm -hmm. a couple of other cocktails. But this is a nice thing for people who are like, I'd like an old fashioned, but maybe something a little different tonight. If you're a whiskey guy, you've got a bottle of vermouth, you do a Manhattan occasionally. The one accessory here really is a Benedictine. We feel like it makes sense on your bar. It's also just kind of nice to have over ice cream. The other thing here are the bitters, right? So we had Ango, uh, just aromatic bitters, and then Peixos. So Peixos has that like licorice anise. To me, with the lemon twist, mm -hmm. like those are like way higher flavors. Like you have like all this deep whiskey, you know, wood notes, vanilla, then you have like sweet from the wine, and then you have anise and lemon way up high. I like that counterbalance. I think it, the drink needs it to give it some like vitality. Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah, well, I, I actually really like uh, smelling the lemon up front and then sort of getting the bitters at the end. Okay. Um, I think it's sort of a cool like start and finish to the drink because mm -hmm. all of these things do sort of combine together and I don't really get them sort of individually. I think especially because this is wine finished. Yeah. You know, this is wine and you know, like so there's- yeah, It's around this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yukare, winner. What do you rate that? Eight, eight two, out of 10? Two thumbs two up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> out of 10. Okay, we're switching gears, dude. The second drink, Cameron's Kick, Shaken, Short Little Sour, Packs a Punch. Do you're a margarita guy. I know I that. I do like margarita. I've been to this dude's house. We've grilled, we've had marks. I wouldn't say this is like a margarita, but it's in the Sours family. Give that a shot, and I'll, I'll kind of narrate it a little bit here while you think about whether or not it's worth it. So this Cameron's Kick is an old cocktail. It's from the 20s. It goes back to like all those old bar manuals and it's a split base. I haven't been able to find out a lot of information about like why they chose these. Like this is not a mashup you see often, but for me it works because the roundness, like toasting out of the orgeat against the lemon acidity, like it just pops and it's a really unique tasting sour. Josh, you, you agree? What do you think? Definitely. I think it's a, it's a nice, uh, sort of like one step away from a classic, like from a bourbon or a rye cocktail, just yeah. because with a blended scotch, you know, you're getting a little bit of the peat. Yep. I mean, it's this is not super smoky, mm -hmm. so it does help sort of stand up and cut through, but I do think the Orgeat probably actually connects the scotch and the- um, Pulls it together a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is nice. But the, the lemon and the and the, uh, the Orgeat do a nice job <laughs> together, but it's, it's for sure different because of the scotch. Yeah, so this, I mean, you wouldn't say this is like a whiskey-centric drink, right? This is more of like a true balanced sour. I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. So the Orgeat, for y'all, you probably know this, classic drink is a Mai Tai, right? Rum, island vibes, but Orgeat does have play in classic cocktails, like here, works in your coffee. As a modifier that we think your bar does need, I would say pick up a bottle of Orgeat if you haven't already. So Josh, this Cameron's Kit cocktail, like, do you see yourself making this at home? Or maybe for your wife or company, like where does it fit in? to a whiskey person's at home cocktail making? I think for somebody who, like for me, like I've got lots of whiskey on the wall oh, and I yeah. want to be able to to provide somebody something that where they're like, all right, well, I'd normally want gin or yeah. you know whatever it is. And I can say, look, I've got something that it's nice and bright. 
Okay. You know, it'd be a good summer or spring drink. Um, and this could be a good entry point because soon, who knows, somebody really might like might like a blended scotch. Yeah, this know? could be a gateway to scotch in general. Yeah, absolutely. Like a little, like nothing crazy smoky. It's only a, a half pour, right? You're splitting it with Irish whiskey, which is a little more uh, user friendly than, than scotch. So yeah, I, I like that. It's a beginner's whiskey drink. Yeah, so I like it. <laughs> Last but not least, although maybe the least, we'll find out. We have the Backsliding Presbyterian. This is a nouveau cocktail, not a classic. So this one is like, we're reaching a little bit. We're gonna see if we can convince Josh that this is a whiskey cocktail he should love. So base spirit here, again, two ounces of straight bourbon, good measure of bitter Italian liqueur and Campari, some heat and sugar from the fiery ginger syrup. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> I think it's good, actually the... Wait, hold on, let me back up. Are you a fan of Campari in general? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he likes bitter stuff already. So we're like halfway there. This, But this is not super bitter though. Okay, fair. Yeah. Yeah, only half an ounce. I describe this as like bitter, sweet, and refreshing. It's kind of like if you bit an orange, right? You're getting like bitter pith. Sure. There's more of that going on. But like as a highball, I think of this as like a summer drink. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, I think that you could probably convince people that there's not even Campari in it. I mean, really? there, I mean, there's there's bitterness, but like I think most people wouldn't be able to tell that it's Campari if I had to guess. I got you. I got you. Okay. Two ounces of bourbon, right? This is by the measurement a whiskey centric drink to me uh, well you know what i'm not going to call your opinion does it read to you as a whiskey cocktail that might be tough honestly okay. I, I think because i sort of know what i'm looking for mm -hmm. from the bourbon you know I, I can search for it but these are strong yeah. you know but it but it's it's still a really balanced drink i mean i i would drink this for sure yeah i feel um, like this would work at like the derby right if you're yeah. throwing a derby day party and sure you got a mint julep like this could be adjacent you're still serving whiskey but it's refreshing you've got club soda so that derby drink is just like sugar and booze and a lot of it. This is maybe like a refreshing step uh, to the side. Yeah, I, I don't think that I would go lower proof okay. for this. Only because you do need it to stand up. It needs to be present. It needs to cut through a little bit, but not not be the overpowering. There. We think of these as like, separately speaking, kind of like their own modifiers to whiskey. Like there's a ton of drinks that we, we do these two. But there are a lot of cocktails that call for these two pairings, right? Boulevardier would be a classic example. If this was a rye, you could talk about the old pal. So there's precedent for these two kind of sorting together and then same here. So the backsliding Presbyterian pulls it all together with club soda and lime. We like this drink, but Josh, you would say this is maybe like the most distant. If you're, if you're a whiskey nerd and you're getting into cocktail game, like this is maybe not where you start. Yeah, I, I like, I mean, I like this a lot and I would drink this and I would serve it. You know, I think it's a great summer, spring. Like barbecuing know. on the patio. Yeah, great. But I, I I do think that for people who are hardcore bourbon whiskey people, yeah. this might be a stretch. Fair. Um, so I'll have yours. As a bourbon guy, as a whiskey guy, what do you look for in cocktails? I think when I'm going, when I'm drinking neat, I'm, I'm interested in the mash bill, I'm interested in the age statement. You know, I think that that can play a lot into, of course, there's an emergence of finished whiskeys, you yeah. know, so sometimes you sort of spend some more time with that, especially the higher quality. Uh, I think that in a cocktail, if I know that it's supposed to sort of mask the whiskey, if yeah, you will, right here. then I'm cool with it. I'm just going to sort of ride it out. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on these and then say... Look for different things. Yeah, absolutely. But if it's supposed to be a whiskey cocktail, mm -hmm. you know, I still want to taste those characteristics. I want to still get... The, the classic characteristics on the nose. I want, you know, I want it to be yeah. a whiskey drink that's just slightly touched yeah. by so other things. So to me, that's more like a Vucare, right? That, For sure. That had a whiskey backbone and it was accented with small modifiers. I try, I try to be fair, because I think it's very easy, especially early on, to just say, if, if I'm expecting this, and if it's not this, then that's that, yeah. you know, so. We've got whiskey guys watching, whiskey girls too, whiskey human beings. Would you recommend they start with a Vucare and then the Cameron's Kick and then the backsliding, or do you think they should just sell out and buy all this stuff because we did a great job? Well, they should buy it first of all. Okay. And I, I think that if you're an old fashioned drinker, then start with the VQRA. Yeah. I think that if you're a sour drinker, you know, start with the Cameron's Kick. Yeah. You know, and I think that if you're, you know, if you drink other things, like, you know, this is a really good, if you're just sort of looking for like a, a good drink, I think, I think everybody's going to like that. Let us know. Make these, uh, grab a bottle of ginger and orange on our website. Liquor stores are going to have your Campari and every, every modifier you need here. The, the cool thing is, is that there's, there's lots of options that allow you to branch out from what you're used to. One, for appealing to yourself, but also appealing to your guests. You know, just get a couple of simple modifiers, 
of course get some library gear right for sure you know? and then uh you know you, you'll 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 soon have like a, a really solid uh, mix of offerings for for you and your guests so come on over whiskey lovers the cocktail world is ready for you hope to see you next time like and subscribe cheers